This video looks at two parallel streets near the city centre, Lower Goat Lane and Upper Goat Lane. We'll begin with the one on the right, Lower Goat Lane. This video is inspired by the uncovering of a hundred year old sign at the Elm Shop and it made me wonder what else we could establish about this and the wider area. Walter Little had his tailor shops in Norwich, Dis, Watton and Wyndham. He was a big football fan and advertised at the river end of Carrow Road. Walter Little's tailor shop, now part of Elm, had previously been a charity shop and fat face. Here it is seen in 1936. Standing in front of this shop today and looking across looks like this, with the 1936 view like this. Dewhurst's at number two, just beside the car, had been decorated up the previous year for the Silver Jubilee of King George V in 1935. In 1936, number four Lower Goat Lane was Margaret's Wool Shop, and by 1961 it had become the Raven's Daughter Coffee Shop, offering continental cooking at reasonable prices. It has the same use in 2022 now as the Copper Kettle. Next door at number 6 is Nova Silver, and from at least 1900 it was Boots the Chemist. A few years ago staff at Nova Silver found some interesting items from its time as a branch of Boots. At number 13 Lower Goat Lane is the Egg, which has a stone outside referring to the Oak Shades pub. Records show the pub was actually at number 11, but perhaps the location of street numbers has changed slightly. I can't find any photos of the pub to compare. Numbers 14 to 16 was at one stage entirely occupied by Lambert's tea dealers, but by 1936 Brown and Edwards grocers had taken over number 14. It's now the home of the games table. I remember it with great affection as Andy's Records with Lizard Records next door and Ace Records opposite. I spent many a happy lunchtime down here. Ace Records is now Chef Ron's restaurant. If we go back to this picture and zoom in on the distance, it's going to get very blurry, but number 18 was the new theatre stores, previously the Excise Tavern. Behind the pub sign you can just see a sign for Kodak and in the present day location the sign is for Lexicon Restaurant. But in 1936 and for many years it was George Gregory's photographic supply shop. Opposite on the corner of Lower Goat Lane and Pottergate was the Bluebell pub until it closed in 1965 with the present day view of that corner now looking like this. This is the view of the opposite corner in 1951, together with the 2022 view of the Grosvenor Fish Bar in that location. We'll travel down Pottergate a short distance before returning by the parallel street of Upper Goat Lane. On the corner of Upper Goat Lane is the Friends Meeting House, built in 1826, replacing an earlier building which had opened in 1679, although at that time non-conformists didn't have the right to have their own place of worship. Blue plaques record individuals who attended the Friends Meeting House. Opposite the Friends Meeting House, also known as Quaker Meeting House, is currently my dentist with the tower of St Gregory's Church beyond, and this is the same view as it looked in 1936. This is number 14 Upper Goat Lane in 1936. The signs say Jones Sewing Machines and also an advert for cycles. Back in 1900, number 14 was the premises of a furniture dealer named Moulton. This is a location in 2022. All of those properties backed onto the site of the Hippodrome as seen here from St Giles Street. In fact, that's probably one of their chimneys in the distance. Or is that in fact the chimney which is part of Lambert's Tea Warehouse on the eastern side of Upper Goat Lane? This is the 2022 view of Lambert's Tea Warehouse. And here is a tobacconist at number one, advertising Gold Flake in 1936, though in 1904 it was Mrs Moore's Confectioners, and here's the present day view. 
between the two goat lanes in 1936 were these premises including the Raven Stores pub on the right hand corner which was damaged in the war and rebuilt around 1955 and is now Paolo's restaurant. So why are these streets called Upper and Lower Goat Lanes? There was a pub in Upper Goat Lane which went by various names until it closed in 1863. No idea where it was, but looking back over photos we've seen, could it have been one of these buildings, subsequently repurposed, that gave these streets their distinctive names?